Matteo Doxia is a Warlock chest armor added to Destiny 2 in the final shape. So this is the basis of one of the best endgame PvE builds for Warlocks in Destiny 2 right now, allowing you to take out all types of champions with elemental buffs. Plus you can also supercharge your Transcendent Meter, giving you extra damage, near infinite abilities, plus damage resistance as well. Well today I'm going to cover how to get Matteo Doxia, and then also go into detail about why this build is good, plus also show you some gameplay as well. But if you like this video then subscribe for more Destiny 2 content, plus also turn on notifications to never miss an update from Endgame Express. And stick around to the end of the video for an exclusive offer to channel members. Okay, first of all, how to get the Matteo Doxia. So to get this one, there's a couple of ways to get it. So first of all, complete the Final Shape campaign on Lendry difficulty as a Warlock. And then select the Matteo Doxia when you get the option in the Lost City after you fought the Witness. Second, you can rank up with Master Hall in the Tower. So reset the rank past rank 16 there. And then you're going to get focusing options for the new exotic armor. Okay, next up, why this build is good. So this is one of the best endgame PvE Warlock builds in the game right now, allowing you to control the battlefield and take out every champion just with your elemental buffs. This build supercharges your Transcendence meter, allowing you to get it back in about 15 seconds. Transcendence is perfect for endgame PvE because you've got increased damage reduction, near infinite abilities, plus you build your super nice and quickly, and also you can dish out extra damage. Champions are just simply not a problem, given you can take out barrier champions with Radiant and also the exotic armor that we're going to be using. Unstoppable champions get stopped right in their tracks with Shatter, Ignitions, and Suspend, and then with Overload champions you can take care of them with slow suppression and also jolt as well. Okay, next up, let's have a look at how to put this build together. So first of all, we've got the exotic armor, and that is the Matteo Doxia. So this is a Warlock chest exotic, and it comes with the perk Stylo Fixes. So the description for Stylo Fixes says, targets damaged by arcane needles emit a suspending detonation when defeated, and landing multiple arcane needles on the same target immediately triggers a larger and more powerful detonation. Defeating suspended targets grants melee energy and your arcane needles are strong against barrier champions. Well next up let's have a look at the subclass, so I'm going to go with Prismatic. With my super I'm using Song of Flames, that makes your equipped weapons radiant and enhances your abilities. While in your super you release a supercharged melee attack that launches additional projectiles. And also your grenade creates a sentient flame wisp that seeks out targets and detonates a scorching explosion and then seeks out other nearby targets too. So while Song of Flame is active, you and nearby allies regenerate abilities more quickly and you're more resistant to incoming damage and your solar and your kinetic weapons scorch targets. Next up for the melee ability, I'm using Arcane Needle. So you sling a woven needle that embed in your target unraveling them. It can activate your melee ability again to chain up two additional attacks. For the grenades, we've got a couple. So first of all, Storm Grenade. That is a grenade that cools down a Focus Lightning Storm and that is going to jolt targets. And then you've got your Transcendent Grenade and this applies a Void and Stasis debuff. So you throw a mass of Void Energy and Stasis Matter. You know, on impact, it deploys a miniature black hole orbited by a slowing field. After a short duration, the black hole implodes suppressing and dealing heavy damage to all nearby targets, and it's going to weaken targets too. And for my class ability, I'm using Phoenix Dive, so you dive to the ground and create a burst of solar light that cures nearby allies. Next up for the aspects, I'm using Hellion, first of all, that is solar. So activate your class ability to summon a solar mortar that lobs flaming projectiles at distant targets, and targets damaged by the mortar are scorched. Then I'm using Feed the Void, that one is of course Void, and defeat your target with any ability to activate Devour. That gives us a good amount of health, plus also a near infinite stream of grenades. Next up, let's have a look at the fragments. I'm using Facet of Grace. Defeat targets with kinetic weapons to grant you bonus transcendence energy, and defeating targets with your super grants you and nearby allies bonus transcendence energy. 
We've also got Facet of Command, so freezing or suppressing a target reloads your equipped weapons and increases the weapon stability, aim assist and airborne effectiveness. And defeating frozen or suppressed targets create a stasis shard or a void breach. You've got Facet of Dawn next, so powered melee hits against targets makes you radiant and powered melee final blows make you and your nearby allies radiant. Next up we've got Facet of Protection, so while surrounded by combatants you're more resistant to incoming damage and while transcendent the effect is increased and that is going to help us stay alive. Finally we've got the Facet of Dominance, so your Void Grenades weaken targets and your Arc Grenades jolt targets, it's going to boost our grenades making us more effective on the battlefield. Well next up we've got the weapons and in my primary slot I'm using the Kvostov Exotic Auto Rifle. So this is one of the best weapons in the game right now. So we've got a couple of perks here. The right choice. So every seventh bullet from the weapon deals additional damage and ricochets to nearby targets. You've got shoot to loot as well. So shooting an orb of power picks it up. Shooting an ammo brick picks it up and automatically reloads all your weapons from reserves. So for this one you'd have to go through quite a lengthy process to get. But I do have a guide on the channel for how to get this weapon. It's a series of post campaign quests after the final shape campaign. It does take time, but it is very, very much worth it. In the energy slot, I'm using Aberrant Action. So this one is a legendary energy sidearm with a rocket assisted frame, meaning the sidearm fires a self-propelled rocket ammunition and projectiles explode on impact for high damage. We've got the origin trait here, Radio Lara Transposer. So rapid final blows cause targets to explode in a pool of Radio Larian fluid. The Aberrant Action is a weapon added to Destiny 2 as part of Episode 1 Echoes, and that means you need to play Breach Executable to be able to get this weapon. In the Heavy slot I'm using Hammerhead, this one is a legendary power machine gun with an adaptive frame, meaning it's got a well-rounded grip, it's reliable and it's sturdy. The origin trait here is Indomitability, where final blows grant grenade energy when playing a light subclass or melee energy when playing a darkness subclass. So to get this one, you want to play Onslaught via the Vanguard menu on the Director, and you can also focus farm this weapon by speaking to Zavala in the tower. Well, next up, let's have a look at the armor mods. So for the head, I'm using Kinetic Siphon. So rapid kinetic weapons, final blows, create an orb of power. Then you've got Ashes to Assets, a gain bonus super energy on grenade kills. For my arms, I'm using Fire Power, so your grenade final blows create orbs of power. And also bolstering detonation, so that grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. Next up, we've got the chest. Next up, we've got the chest mods. So solar resistance, arc resistance, and void resistance. That reduces incoming damage for that chosen element. Then we've got the legs. So kinetic weapons surge. So your kinetic weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you've got an armor charge, and your armor charge now decays over time. And then finally, for the class items, we've got time dilation. Your decaying armor charge has a longer duration. We've got Reaper. Shortly after using your class ability, your next weapon final blows spawn an orb of power. And then we've got Bomber, so it reduces grenade cooldown when you're using your class ability. Also, we're using a few artifact mods as well, so Radiant Orbs. So while you've got a Solar or Prismatic subclass equipped, picking up an orb of power makes you Radiant. And then you've got Galvanic Armor, so while you've got an Arc or Prismatic subclass equipped, Incoming damage from combatants is reduced while you are amplified. Okay, that is how to put the build together. Next up, let's have a quick look at the gameplay loop. So the linchpin here of the build really is the Kvostov Exotic Auto Rifle. So Eyes Up Guardian is a great perk here that provides more damage when you pick up an orb of power. Therefore, we want to generate orbs of power through our mods. So with Kinetic Siphon, for example and then shoot them to activate Eyes Up Guardian. You know, more damage means more transcendence, and the Kinetic Surge mods also, plus the Radiant buff from the Radiant Orbs, gives us a massive damage boost, all activated through just our primary weapon. And defeating a target with any ability is going to provide us Devour. That helps us with damage reduction. Plus also we've got Galvanic Armor to provide incoming damage resistance while amplified. This means we're buffing our damage output Plus also, we're getting incoming damage resistance all before that transcendence effect. So all you Warlocks out there, take this one into endgame PvE and see what you think. And let me know down in the comments what you think about the build. And also share your improvements in the comments.
Well, that is it today for how to get the Matteo Doxia for the best endgame PvE Warlock build in Destiny 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching or for listening. Don't forget you can hit that subscribe button down below for even more Destiny 2 content here on Endgame Express. You can also like the video and share the video too. That would help me out here on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Well, thank you for watching that video, and today I'd like to talk about Endgame Express Backstage, the home of exclusive content for fans of Endgame Express. To join, simply join up through Patreon or the YouTube membership. You get early access and exclusive content, shout outs in the videos, access to live streams, plus also access to our exclusive Endgame Express Backstage Community Discord. Well, here's some more information about the tiers. So in tier one, that is $2.99 a month, you get access to our community discord and also early access to content. In tier two, that is $4.99 and you get shout outs in the credits of videos and also you get access to community polls and help shape the content. For tier three, that is $8.99 and you'll get access to exclusive community videos and also get access to exclusive live streams as well. Well, the core content on Endgame Express is always going to be free, but if you want to go above and beyond and support Endgame Express, then all you need to do is get access to Endgame Express backstage today through Patreon or YouTube membership. You know, Endgame Express is a one-man band right now, but I would love to expand into more games, podcasts, more channels, but to do that, I'm going to need your help to make this sustainable and in return, I offer you some exclusive benefits and backstage-only content. Well, if you enjoy Endgame Express, then consider Endgame Express backstage today. You can hit that membership button right down below, or you can find us on the Patreon links, and you'll find those links in the description. Well, thank you for listening, and thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you very soon.